Welcome back Science 7. Today we are continuing our Unit E, Chapter 2.1. What are rocks and minerals? Last time we talked about some properties of rock, like uh, technically mineral at the end too. Uh, and we went through some of those examples like calcite. And when it comes to some of the minerals properties such as streak, luster property, and so on. Today we are continuing our minerals property and then we're going to move on to type of the rock. So what type of the rock that we see? Some of them we already went through a little bit last time like sedimentary rock. Some of them which you will learn today, igneous rock and so on. So last time we talked about streak and we finished at that time. Streak is one of the property, as you can see, different color. It's kind of embedded like a crack between the ore to another ore section. So the color of powder of the mineral is known as streak. And sometimes the streak has a different color. When it comes to streak, we have something I like to call as a streak test. It's kind of like a scratch test, if you will. It does involve some ceramic plate or tile that you see over here. So that's the one that I'm referring when I talk about ceramic tile. With that, we are literally making a little scratch using the rock sample. And scratching the mineral sample kind of give you the color and we are using our one of the five senses vision in this case to identify what kind of metals are included inside of these two structures so for example can you see it's more red and red and um, brown color over here this show that it probably has more copper content inside of this mineral something like that the other part of the property that you can think of is cleavage and fracture. When it comes to cleavage, you, this is more about how layer by layer breaking things happen and then fracture is like the word suggests is talking about brittleness. So it basically show how minerals break apart. So if you think about those two as a whole category called brittleness you're on the right track under the brittleness test we can check these two property if it's breaking as smooth flat layer kind of breaking as a plain sheet way we call it cleavage on the other hand if it break roughly then that's the one where you can think of as rough or jagged and it's uneven we call that fracture so in theory cleavage is smooth surface it break in the perspective that you can predict something like that so let's go through how the cleavage works so first of all cleavage has a pattern i want you to where is my laser pointer there you go i want you to look at the bottom mineral over here and the mineral that is located down right down left sorry if you look at the structure the structure of the mineral go through like a very finely designed cube it's quite cubical and if you remember calcite calcite has this cubical growing on the top if you want to do this experiment a little bit some of you guys may done an experiment called um, basically you're making sugar solution over concentrated using a uh, food coloring you can make a sugar crystal you can give it a shot using salt table salt and you can actually find how table salt work calcite has calcium which is very similar in terms of uh, metal property as um, magnesium and sodium at one point they actually tend to create a cubic shape so if you look at the generic example it's a cube growing another cube and that means we can break things into a cubic shape if you will quite smooth quite predictable pattern 
On the other hand, if we look at Felspar, those are the ones that work more like a bridge at one point, and this is more upright compared to calcite that is growing on the side way. When you look at Muscovit, oh sorry, Felspar was this, Halite was another one, sorry. Felspar is a one that it's kind of like a broken wood if you will imagine you chop the wood and then some of the piece that coming out as you can see from the right and left those are how it looked like as you may notice it's a log strip that is keep adding on and when it comes to muscovit which you don't have to know but know the fact that when it comes to cleavage in one direction work like this it's kind of like a surface of a um, heartwood after you're cutting the wood horizontally it you remember the one that count the ring that is equal to the plant's age, something like that. It stack up as one dimension. So one dimension cleavage, two direction cleavage, imagine like X and Y, third dimension, and then uh, two directions that is being tilted. Those are the example of cleavage. When it comes to fracture, I believe picture explains to you better than the actual sentences. Compared to the previous one, cleavage, as you can see, fracture show irregular and rough surface. So the thing is, when it comes to irregular surface, it's quite self-explanatory. You don't see the rhyme or reason for each of them. And the angle is quite different. We have obtuse angle down here and then an acute angle over there. I don't think there is a lot of perpendicular cases, but have that in your mind. This is more the result of the brittleness test. All right, the property of the rock number five basically talking about hardness test ladies and gentlemen we already did hardness test before um, it basically measure how easily a matter can be scratched so that means if an object is stronger than another object you will know that stronger object will leave a mark on a weaker object so hardness tests was learned in unit d whenever we talk about our material and we have a table that lists soft material all the way to tough material so let's go with most scale of hardness as a quick review i believe last time in unit d scale was 10 to 1 so it was reversed but it doesn't really matter um, when it comes to our fingernail situation, we are located at 2. If you think of a calcite, the one that has a lot of calcium and carbonate, it's actually relatively weak still. And it can be scratched, probably cannot be scratched by fingernail, but it can be scratched by iron nail because iron is stronger than calcium and carbonate, so that's why. Similarly, if you go down the scale, diamond is the toughest and one of the hardest material on earth. So that's why diamond can leave a mark for probably everything in here. When it comes to talc situation, it's so soft and then it's so brittle that it probably cannot make a mark for any of the following over here. So have that in your mind, which means when it comes to marking situation, let's say cordum, versus felspar. Felspar is weak, so corundum can leave a mark. Felspar will not gonna leave a mark to the corundum, something like that. So it is a one direction comparison situation. It is relative scale, by the way. Relative scale. So have that in your mind. Relative scales means it's not an absolute comparison who knows in the universe we may find something that is way stronger than diamond something like that so there are several steps if you will or several stages that you need to think of sometimes people use glasses as a hardest material so when it comes to the level number one it is so soft that we can basically scratch with our fingernail if it's extreme situation even using a um, probably pencil lead i believe that's a uh, rare cases but have that in your mind second level can be scratched with a um, fingernail but a little bit tougher forces you need to apply third 
easily with knife. Fourth is um, somewhat more strength required, but knife. Five, hard to scratch. You can see the way of depth after the knife's trick versus this is just surface area. And when it comes to number six, cannot scratch with the knife, but it can barely scratch glass. Glass, oops, other color. Glass is another material that we sometimes use to check the hardness. And when it comes to level seven, scratch glass easily. Eight, scratch glass very easily. Scratch is a steel file now, so you can make a little mark on a steel. And 9 and 10, cut glass and scratch a scale file. So this is relative strength between the material versus whatever the testing matter, like fingernail. Properties of rock number 6, talking about transparency, ladies and gentlemen. If something is transparent, that's a fancy way of saying you can see through. Some of those luster property make it harder to see through like especially when it comes to waxy type of the mineral or a pearly type transparencies are quite masked masked by the fact that you cannot see through translucent ladies and gentlemen is basically piggybacking from my example of pearly mineral situation they're shadowy so turbid opaque is something that you cannot see through at all so transparent translucent opaque situation i'm putting all of the three on the slide over here transparent as you can see you can see through and then detect what's the material that you're hiding behind something like that translucent if you think about it surface area close to the edge this area is okay, you can see through, but when it comes to center where it's concentrated, you have a hard time seeing it. Opaque situation, you cannot see things through at all. So we have science log activity, three of them. I don't want you to do these now. The first material, you see this picture. I want you to look at the luster property, color, cleavage or fracture, streak, transparency. I want you to look at those and then do the activity as a homework. Similar situation for the second object. I want you to do this as a homework question. Same expectation for the third one. Now, let's continue our lesson. Identifying minerals, and some of you guys know that Canada actually has quite a lot of minerals that is deposited underneath our land. And we also have lots of oil too, the petroleum product in Alberta. So let's think about what kind of minerals do we have a lot so that Americas and other countries are importing our raw material. First of all, we do have some gold, not as much as Africa. South Africa has a lot of diamond. When it comes to area like Congo, they have a lot of gold deposit. We still have some gold too. Copper, which is used as a wire most of the time. Nickel zinc lead silver iron and any others like clay gravel potash and asbestos those are some of the other type of ore slash mineral slash particles that we have and there are over 500 mines and quarries scattered across the Canada. There's some in BC, there are some in, uh, in the East Coast. Operation taking place in every province and territory. Some of them have a serious health issue. And like I mentioned, this is a, a little map that show you whether we have how many type of minings and quarries are located nearby 
and obviously this is not 500 per se but if you look at the location nearby alberta has a very big two location near the south side of alberta british has quite a bit British Columbia the reason being is they uh, they have a lot of deposit right underneath of their plates and the Rocky Mountain range Quebec actually has quite a bit so as Ontario as soon as we go to the North Pole area um, we do not have much even though Alaska has some oil deposit but that's a different story because when it comes to uh, minerals they need some pure elements that is embedded with other material and some of those ore has to be stored underneath let's go with our new chapter we're not going to go to a lot of new chapter today but next chapter to talk about three classes of rocks we learn about sedimentary law rock uh, we are going to learn about igneous and metamorphic so let me ask you a question what are two factors that help create rocks and i know the picture in on the right side kind of give you up the answer first of all pressure we need to pressurize and then make it into one matter and others heat so if you think about each factor, the first factor is heat. Second factor is pressure. So you do have two abiotic factors that play a huge role for the rock formation. Sometimes heat only plays a huge role. Sometimes pressure only plays a huge role. Sometimes heat and pressure both have to work to create something. So in this science log activity, I want you to think about one. I want you to fill the blank using the terms given below. Pause the video a little bit and replay once you're ready. It is basically fill in the blank. You guys should have had this list. Magma, where does it go? Pressure, where does it go? Heat, where does it go? And here's my answer, ladies and gentlemen. If you think about the list, magma, pressure, and heat, first of all, magma is the one that is underneath of the earth crust, generally come from the mantle, and that's the one that you can put magma, the first one over here. Pressure shouldn't be the one that come up from bottom because pressure always happen from top to the bottom So that's gravitational force. So pressure goes to the second which is close to the top and Heat is the one that is generated from the magma to the upper surface heat rises pressure goes down. So have that in your mind So in junior high and even if you're not in junior high and they actually go to geology as your main goal, there are major classification of rock, ladies and gentlemen. The first type is known as igneous. Second times, sec second part is known as sedimentary. And third type is known as metamorphic. I want you to match the picture with the rock. So which one you think igneous, which one you think sedimentary, which one you think metamorphic. As time go, we are going to discover what represent what in detail. And that is our lesson for today. I want you to do those three scientific science log activities that I assigned you in this PowerPoint, which is about doing a um, identification of luster property is it cleavage or fracture those kind of things and i want you to read textbook page 378 to 381 which is about igneous rock sedimentary and metamorphic as we're going to go through quite quickly on the next class